It is full, which means we're getting close to the end of the year. I can start wearing long sleeve shirts in my videos again, even though technically with all the lights on, it's blistering hot down here. Very cold outside though. I know what you're thinking. You've seen the title. What, what, do, you, what do you mean there's 50 games releasing for my Nintendo Switch? I saw that last Direct. It was literally just farming games in Square Enix. Well, this is why I said that Direct maybe wasn't the best it could have been, because there are so many many games that seemingly Nintendo even forgot about. You can consider this a beat-em-ups direct if you want. I do. Call it whatever you want. Just as long as you like the video, comment down below with which games you're looking forward to the most and let me know if I forgot anything. I tried really hard not to forget anything, but there's a lot of games. So to make it as easy as possible to follow, I'm going to talk about them in order of when they'll release, starting today all the way to the end of the year. The first game is actually sponsor time. And I know you're probably wondering two big things right now as you watch this video. One, how am I going to afford all of these games? And two, did his shirt just change? And the answer to both those questions can be solved with honey. Well, I guess not so much the shirt thing, but the, the money thing. This video is sponsored by PayPal Honey, and I can't tell you how much money I save using Honey almost every day. But what is Honey? It's only the number one shopping tool in America. It's a little button that sits at the top of your browser, and then whenever you're shopping on websites online that you would be shopping on anyway, you forget it's even there, it'll pop up and ask you, hey, how would you like me, a little robot thing, to go about and find all the coupon codes possible online and apply them all at checkout to find the ones that'll save you the most amount of money possible? And I always say, yes, honey, thank you. I appreciate that. I love you. It is so stupid easy to get honey. It installs in like two clicks and then it's just there forever. When I was setting up this new studio space, the lights that I brought, it saved me like $50 on those. So if you want to support this channel, it's as easy as clicking the link in the description or going to joinhoney.com forward slash beatemups and getting honey for free and then just start saving money. And I look forward to saving money when I buy a bunch of these games that are coming out. Speaking of, here's the next one. So these videos take a lot of work to edit and depending on how long it took Zach to put it all together, Overwatch 2 might actually have already been released. Now, even as someone who really enjoyed Overwatch back in the day and also when it finally came to Switch years later, I am a little confused with how this second installment works for the Switch, but also in general. We know it comes out on October 4th, and it will introduce new heroes and gameplay experiences, but I don't think it's technically a full new game release. I think it's replacing the original game and acting more like a relaunch than a sequel. It's probably out now, so go find out. Easily one I am most excited about, Nier Automata The End of Yoha Edition is launching on Nintendo Switch October 6th. It's the award-winning post-apocalyptic action RPG. It sits most firmly in the hack and slash genre, but the game isn't afraid to mix it up with bullet hell, top-down, side-scrolling, and just about everything the game can throw at you while you explore the open world and experience the incredible story. It's one of my favorite games of all time. I really love hack and slashes. You have to check it out. No Man's Sky finally releases on Switch October 7th. And I don't know how the console is going to handle this one. I've been playing it on my Steam Deck and even on here, it runs a little rough. If you've heard of No Man's Sky, you've probably heard it was just about one of the biggest disappointments in gaming history, but that was 2016. Yeah, I know, we're all getting very old. Believe it or not, over the last six years, the dev team has poured so much love, fixes, extra content, and so many quality additions to this package, all for free, to get the game up to the standard that was expected and beyond, and they have succeeded tenfold. I started this game recently, actually, and it is so much fun. I can't wait to take it on the go. Nickelodeon Kart Races. Three. Now bear with me here, a little convoluted. This one, I believe, is a follow-up to Nickelodeon Karts 1 and 2. So obviously a Mario Kart clone, but with SpongeBob, Garfield, TMNT, Avatar, and Beta Zim, Rocco Modern Life, and okay, maybe I'll play it. Question is, will this be a better Garfield Kart racer than Garfield Kart itself? Hopefully. 
That game wasn't good. <laughs> a Plague Tale was easily my favorite 2019 sleeper hit. I played it on my Xbox, and the stunning visuals, gripping story, likable characters, and stealth gameplay had me hooked from start to disgusting finish. I am so happy there's a sequel, but I will probably continue my adventure on Xbox as the Switch version is a cloud release. Meaning the game will be streamed to your console as you play, and uh, my experience with cloud gaming on the Switch has not been the best. I'm still glad the option is here for people that do want to experience it this way. Our first exclusive game in the list, and easily one that I am most excited for, Mario and Rabbids Sparks of Hope. It's a sequel to the surprise hit Kingdom Battle. This interesting Ubisoft cross Nintendo collaboration sees the Rabbid characters join forces with classic Mario characters in strategic gameplay and wonderfully animated cutscenes. Also, I'm just now realizing this, but Mario on the cover looks a lot like Peter Quill on the cover of Guardians of the Galaxy. And I'm pretty sure that was intentional. Persona games. I, I mean, I don't really know what else needs to be said about these. Easily one of the most anticipated series for the Switch, Persona starts launching this October. Three, four, and five are all on the way, but they're starting in reverse order with the full Persona 5 Royal Experience releasing digitally and physically on October 21st. We don't have release dates for the other two yet, but Persona games are some of my favorite JRPGs of all time, and the fact that they splice in those life sim elements, they make them so addicting, they are perfect to play handheld. No, you didn't miss anything. Yes, Ark did release on the Switch back in 2018. And yes, it was one of the worst ports we've ever seen on the console. But the Ultimate Survivor Edition not only brings several huge expansion packs, but it promises a complete revamped version of the game on Switch to hopefully fix all of the issues in the past. It's weird that they're doing it now this late, but I'm interested. Oh, and we're still in October and only now hitting our stride with the second exclusive on the list, Bayonetta. It launches just a couple days before Halloween, which is perfect. Our favorite hack and slash queen has been through quite the trilogy of games, and now the odds seem stacked against her as she fights to save the world with a familiar cast of characters and one new punk girl who I kind of like. And yes, it's a little bit because she looks like you. Oh, and speaking of Halloween, launching the same day as Bayonetta, we have Resident Evil Village. And even scarier than all the zombies and creatures in that game, it's also a cloud release. Yeah. Oh look, finally a new IP for the list, Harvestella. I'm actually looking forward to this one. It is in the farming sim genre, and that is way too overblown right now, but this one blends in action RPG elements, and it's published and developed by Square Enix, with some people saying it's Square's answer to Rune Factory, so I definitely have my eye on this one. It's actually a demo on the eShop right now you can download and play. I tried on stream, but the game crashed, so I'm just gonna wait. <laughs> it Takes Two is easily the best co-op game ever created. It is literally impossible to play this game alone, as it's built from the ground up with cooperative play in mind, which is why you only need one copy of the game, and your friend can download the game for free wherever they are in the world to play with you. It won awards for Game of the Year, Best Family Game, Best Multiplayer Game, Best Design, and so much more. It's perfect for the Switch. I see foo. I play food. That was terrible. Cut that, cut that, cut that. This action roguelike beat-em-up fought its way onto the PlayStation and PC earlier this year. And I've been waiting to play it until the physical release for PlayStation 5 a few months later. I actually wasn't waiting for the Switch version at all because I even considered that it might come to the Switch. As you martial art your way through the game, each time you die, you're resurrected as an older version of yourself with more powerful attacks but reduced health. If you get too old, you can permanently die, which means having to restart from the beginning. I wish when I got too old and died, I got to restart from the beginning. Oh boy, a lot of Sonic fans hopes and dreams lie in Sonic Frontiers. A bold new adventure from Sonic Team in what looks like Sonic meets Breath of the Wild. And by meets, I mean it's literally if you put Sonic into Breath of the Wild. It's an open zone game and honestly we're just gonna have to wait to see how this one turns out, but it is coming very soon. Tactics Ogre Reborn is based on the 2010 release but with improved graphics, sound, and updated game design. It's one of the many Square Enix games on the way this year, and it seems like they want to go all out on this remake. Whew. 
coming in hot with the Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. I am actually very excited for these. The new Pokemon games drop in just a matter of weeks. It honestly doesn't feel that long since Sword and Shield, and we only had Arceus earlier this year, but here we are already getting excited for brand new Pokemon, a brand new adventure, a Pokemon game doing things we've never seen a Pokemon game do before. It has co-op multiplayer, and it's boasting itself as an open world game. I have so many questions about this release, and I cannot wait. Just Dance. It's Just Dance. Frontier Mission is another Square Enix remake of the 1995 title by the same name. I don't know much about this one, but on Wikipedia under game genre, it's listed as all of the following. Tactical RPG, third person shooter, side scrolling shooter, real time strategy, and an MMO. So I mean, it's covering a lot of bases. So that's November. For those playing along at home, we already have big exclusives like Mario and Rabbids and Bayonetta coming in October. And then with Pokemon in November, and everything else scattered around that, we're only now heading into what I have for December. Oh, which actually isn't much as far as confirmed, but we'll get to that. Dragon Quest Treasures confuses me a little because it has all the aesthetic charm of Dragon Quest Builders that I love so well, but without the building. Even as a pretty big Dragon Quest fan, I'm a little confused on why this game needed to be. But that won't stop me from grabbing it. And as far as I can tell, it's a Nintendo Switch exclusive as well. So I'll be there day one if I'm not still playing Pokemon, because that's like a Oh, just over a week after. <laughs> okay, so here's what I meant by I don't know about December. A lot of these are slotted and confirmed for 2022, saying things like winter or holiday, but we don't have hard release dates, so let's go through those. Oh, I am very excited for this one. Crisis Core. Talk about wild. PSP's Crisis Core Final Fantasy VII is getting a HD remaster on the Switch, and it honestly looks fantastic. Like, beyond fantastic. I was shocked to find out it's not a cloud version of the game. Ironically, because cloud is in the game. I'd even say this is a step up from a typical remaster, featuring renewed 3D models of the characters and backgrounds, an improved battle system, and a newly arranged soundtrack from the original composer. I mean, this is looking really sick. I've never played this prequel to Final Fantasy VII, so it's going to be great. I only found out about Wild Frost while researching for this video. Thanks, Nintendo. I don't know if this has been in a direct yet. And I'm actually really excited for it. It's a tactical roguelike deck builder with a fantastically charming art style. Then we have River City Girls 2. It's the sequel to the original zany twist on the River City format. This one brings back all previous playable characters as well as adding in brand new ones. People are complaining about how many farming sim games there are, but honestly, there's just as many, if not more, tactical RPGs on the way to the console. Midnight Suns is another, but featuring many popular Marvel hero characters, but we don't really know anything else about this game yet. And then we have Metal Slug Tactics. This comes from the dev team .emu, which is the same team that made the recent Shredder's Revenge and Streets of Rage 4. Now they're taking a shot at the Metal Slug series, but twisting up the genre. They've really nailed the classic pixel art and animations the series is known for. All right, if you haven't heard of this next one, bananas. It's My Hero Academia if it was a battle royale. It's called Ultra Rumble. And I know what you're thinking, but I guess it kind of makes sense. Some of my favorite episodes of the anime had all the classes from the different schools competing to take each other out and be the last team left, so this is literally just that. I might be crazy, but I'm kind of looking forward to this one, even if it is just a short-lived gimmick. Two Tomb Raider games are coming to the Switch, and sadly, it's none of the good ones <laughs> from the main series. Not that these games are bad, but they're spin-off games. Lara Croft and the Temple of Osiris and the Guardian of Light. They're isometric action adventures with a lot of puzzling gameplay that can be played in co-op. And yes, if you're playing along at home still, this is more Square Enix. There's a ton. My wildest dreams have come true recently. I'm actually getting a sequel to Alan Wake 2. I've talked many times about how the original Alan Wake is a cult classic and one of my favorite games I've ever played. But that sentiment wasn't exactly resonated with the entire world, and so I never thought I'd see a sequel. Now that sequel isn't coming to Switch that we know of. Maybe they'll do a cloud thing, but that hasn't been announced. However, a remaster of the first game is launching on Switch. I would pretend 
predict before Halloween because that's just perfect. But at this point, there's no confirmed date. It's just coming this year sometime. Whether you're a current wrestling fan or an ex-wrestling fan, whether you love AEW or you for some reason don't, it's amazing, you should. I mean, if you're not watching it, you're really missing out on some of the best wrestling and promotions that have ever been put on for years. But regardless of that, they're finally making their first video game. And it screams old school wrestling games like Day of Reckoning and WWF No Mercy. You know, like when wrestling games were good. I can't wait to get in there and create a wrestler version of myself and then have myself fight my good buddies like Adam Cole and Ethan Page. Oh, what? You didn't know about that? <laughs> It's whatever. Okay, so you know how we're getting Resident Evil Village on the Switch? Well, what I didn't tell you is at some point this year, we're supposed to also get the two and three remakes as well as seven. Yeah. They're also cloud-based, so moving on. What would happen if Doraemon, if that's even how you pronounce it, and Story of Seasons collaborated and made a game? Well, you'd get a farming sim with Doraemon launching sometime this year on Switch. What's a Doraemon? I don't know. I really don't think I'm saying it correctly. So we had Disney Dreamlight Valley. Valley release on Switch. I've been meaning to make a video about that actually, and it's essentially Disney's answer to Animal Crossing, and it's made by Gameloft. Well, Gameloft, I guess, are also making Disney's answer to Mario Kart with Disney Speedstorm. I'm not sure what is going on with all of these Disney versions of Nintendo games, but Dreamlight Valley is actually pretty good, so I'm here for it. Devolver Digital keeps bringing us banger after banger, and soon we're getting a wizard with a gun. A cooperative sandbox survival game where you can customize ammunition and has big Bastion vibes to me. Yeah, I gotta be honest, this Lord of the Rings Gollum game isn't looking great. Some average at best shots of the world and a few clips of very basic gameplay is all we've seen so far. I don't think the initial reaction was that favorable and now it seems they may be taking longer to polish the game. I actually do like this dev team a lot, but previously they've only really worked on 2D point and click. So this is certainly something new for them and they're trying something bigger. I really hope it works out for them. Okay, so with Gollum, that actually falls into another category of it is supposed to be this year, but it's missing. Meaning it's not looking great, but it is supposed to be happening. And I swear I hate talking about this next game more than any of you hate hearing about it. The developer of Genshin Impact, yes, I know everyone collectively sigh, did say recently in an interview that it was headed to Switch sometime in 2022, but it's still unclear exactly when it will drop. And since the game revealed itself, announced it was coming to Switch, this is the only time anything about that port has been mentioned. So I'm holding on to hope. What is going on? It's on mobile phones. The spiritual successor to Jet Set Radio Future, Bomb Rush Cyberfunk, is also MIA. It's still supposed to be launching this year, but it's one of the many missing games of late. And just like with Bomb Rush, WrestleQuest, last we heard, is supposed to be launching this year, but it's getting late in the year and it has gone very silent. This one is very quirky and I love the look of it. It's a wrestling game, but mixed into an RPG fantasy with beautiful pixel art featuring icons like Macho Man Randy Savage and Jake the Snake Roberts. We were told that Golf Story is releasing this year and we haven't been told otherwise, but I'm throwing this out here. I think this one is missing and I don't know if we'll see it this year. This game doesn't really have the vibes of a holiday winter release. It's like sporty and like summery. It was announced forever ago, but there's been literally no update since then so we can only really hope it launches soon. And sadly, uh, I think we all know the story of this next one. Advance Wars 1 and 2 Reboot Camp is a fantastic looking remake of the Game Boy Advance titles, but due to what's currently happening with the situation in Ukraine, I am assuming that Nintendo is just not even touching this. And at this point they can't, right? They made a stand this long and I appreciate and I'm all here for that stand. But until that situation resolves itself and depending on how it resolves itself, I don't expect to even hear about this game. Also, while I'm here, wishing you the best, Ukraine. We did a stream a while back raising a ton of money for the situation. No one expected it to go on this long. And if you're from there or you have family there, I hope they're safe. I didn't mean to get 
here with this, but we're already here, so. I am really annoyed about this next one. Quantum League is a revolutionary time paradox shooter where you battle within a time loop, tactically teaming up with your past and future selves in 1v1 and 2v2 matches. It is such a freaking cool concept. It's on Steam for the low price of $10, and it was announced like forever ago. It's completely missing, and I even forgot it existed until now. And if you want to talk about missing games, do we even mention Silk Song? Again, it's one of them that I hate even continually talking about it or putting it in a video like, oh, it's coming this year, but the, the date on it is still 2022. So until they tell us it's not coming this year, I can't not say, hey, it's supposed to be here. And one of the wildest, pun intended, missing games for this year is Outer Worlds. Wild because the game released in 2019 and it was promised for Switch early 2021. It's been pushed back and slated for this year and we still haven't heard about it. Look, I know Fire Emblem Engage is technically next year. I mean, it releases literally less than three weeks after the year ends. And I'm very, very excited about it. It's literally like three months away. Let me have this one. <laughs> I'm just putting it in. I don't care. Engage has a lot to stack up to, with three houses easily being the most successful Fire Emblem game to date and my personal favorite. This time around, you team up with iconic heroes from past games like Mario. Moth and Celica. Celica? Like Moth and Celica. 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 That's my accent. Using the power of emblem rings to add their power to yours. Not only merging appearances, but you inherit weapon skills and more in the classic tactical battle system with a fresh cast of characters. I don't know about you guys, but I think the year is looking pretty stacked. Even if you only want to grab a fraction of these games on the Switch over the next few months, your wallet is still gonna be hurting. Everything from some big exclusives to cool third-party releases, we definitely don't have a lack of games for the Switch. It's looking far more bleak some other places. Not that I'm playing favorites, I'm just saying. Also, yeah, for those who actually want to count it, I think it was 47 games, not 50. 47 in the title is just such a random number. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just gonna call it 50. Hey, if you found a bunch of games you didn't know about that you're excited to play this year, or if you just enjoyed this video, I really like making these every once in a while to kind of get everyone hyped back up for Switch. I feel like sometimes we get into a little bit of a lull and I want to keep making content and I want to let you guys know that, hey, these games are coming and get ready for me to review them. I feel like these get us all a bit more rejuvenated and realizing that things are actually happening, even if it doesn't seem like it because we're not told about it or we just kind of forget. Again. Like, comment, subscribe, you know, all the crap. Look, 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 look! Why? Why are you watching this and not... You're at the end of the video. You know the retention rate for getting to the end of the video is so low. And then most people that start the video don't get here. So if you're here and not subscribed, I don't understand you at all. You're weird, but the good kind of weird. So join the family. Bye.